Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm now a third year med student and uh, when I was taking the MCAT, it was the most difficult exam I had ever taken and it felt stressful because it was so high stakes for me to get into med school. Um, I've made a lot of other videos about a comprehensive plan that you can do to get a higher score on the MCAT and that exists ad nauseum on the internet. But in this video, I want to talk about the five most high yield tactical tips that I took away from my MCAT studying to get a higher score and these are probably tips that you might not read on the typical Reddit post that's talking about the resources that you need or the study timeline. And um, all right, let's go. So the first one is do your first 100 questions before you start studying. If you, um, if you have started studying, then you'll probably know that doing practice questions or taking a sample test feels very stressful when you don't know all the knowledge. And the thing is that when you take your first practice test or when you first, um, first do your first 100 practice questions, you will learn a lot more than you think you'll learn from reading a textbook or doing the pages. And the reason for that is there's a lot of things about the MCAT that you probably won't know until you take your first practice test. That is like how much timing to spend for each question, how you have to use critical thinking after reading each passage, how to approach each science passage to know what questions they're going to ask you, how, what like things, what areas are you weak at, what areas are you strong at, things like that. Um, I remember that I hadn't finished organic chemistry when I was studying for the MCAT, and so I remember thinking that I really need to study a lot of organic chemistry before I take a practice exam. And fortunately, there was a tutor and I was in a class where they forced us to take a sample exam before we even started studying. And so because of that, I realized that actually um, organic chemistry, the second semester of organic chemistry is very surface uh, level tested on the MCAT. It's mostly the first semester. I also realized that where my areas of weakness were, for example, I got my lowest score on psychology, sociology, because I had never taken a psychology class before. So that kind of drove what sections I should focus on. It also told me like what I need to work on in terms of timing, like I was running out of time on critical reading. And so I realized that I need to start reading the newspaper, reading books so that I can get better at reading. It also taught me that you don't actually need to read the entire passage fully in depth, but you do need to um, kind of get the important points when you approach the questions. And so if you're ever stuck on your studying, I would say approach practice questions first and then use that to guide your studying. Okay, number two is have a system for noting down your wrong answers on a Word document or Excel or a piece of paper. It can be a simple system, but make sure that you're noting down like, okay, I took um, the AAMC practice exam number three and I got these questions wrong from this section and make sure that you have a system so that you can revisit that later on because I usually took an exam, let's say on a Saturday, and I would take Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to be able to review that, or even Thursday. It would take me a long time to review that. But then what I noticed is that four weeks later, I would kind of forget those questions and forget um, my answers to those questions. And so um, try to note down what you're getting wrong and try to figure out, like, is there a pattern of like why I'm getting this wrong? And so I was tutoring a student um, last year, and she had a really effective system where every question that she got wrong, she would note it down, and then she would have a single Excel column that says, why did I get this wrong? And so she was trying to notice the pattern of why she was getting certain questions wrong. And eventually she figured out like, oh, it's not just that I don't understand this topic, it's also that I'm not able to um, like synthesize this information or I'm like consistently forgetting um, what the protein structures are for different types of amino acids. Things like that where you can like identify your patterns that is critical in test taking where you're able to like actually have a system. Um, the next thing that I would recommend is what I had is I had a friend and I had a tutor and um, I had a friend who I would send all the questions that I was getting wrong that I couldn't really understand from the answer explanation because what you'll notice is that in a lot of third party explanations or in the AMC explanations, the explanations aren't that good unfortunately and so if you have a friend or you have a tutor where you take those questions that you're getting wrong, you approach them and then you're like, okay, I'm still not fully understanding this and I sent a screenshot to my friend on Facebook and we would just do this to each other and so like at the end of the day I had like 20 screenshots that I was sending to him and he had like 10 or 15 that he was sending to me and we would try to reason them through, the, through them together and we'd spend about like an hour on zoom at the end of or FaceTime every day uh, at the end of the day and we would just go through those questions and explain them to each other and we realized that by by forcing ourselves to be on top of our game we were kind of like able to figure out the answer together it was really good for critical thinking and so if you can have that system for noting down wrong answers and then revisiting them with a tutor or just a friend who's at the same level as you, then you can really enhance your studying process. Okay, number three, 
spend more time on figuring out why something is right or wrong after you do a practice question. Um, I remember that I was doing the section bank questions for AMC and I just was getting so many questions wrong and I was not understanding why and I just wanted to get through it, get through it because I was so uncomfortable in that process of getting things wrong that um, I just wanted to do more and more questions and I wanted to go through third party questions and make sure my score was improving. But I realized that you know the best way to study is just once you get a question wrong, just review it to the point that you never get that question wrong. That means that you consult the resources like the textbooks that you have, go to Google, go to YouTube, try to make sure that you don't get that question wrong and make sure you understand like the holistic picture behind that. Um, and that might mean that you're spending a lot more time reviewing, but it's okay to kind of prioritize questions and then do the content review based on that question later. Because what you want to make sure is that if you're taking the real MCAT exam, then you don't want to um, go through questions that you have kind of seen in a different format before and you're forgetting how to resolve uh, how to solve those questions. You want to make sure that you're really focusing on reviewing your questions. And so a mental trick that I have for myself or a mental model that I keep telling myself is that it's okay to get as many questions as I do wrong, but the key is that I won't get a second I won't you can't fool me twice. Like I'm not going to get this question wrong again. And so make sure that you're reviewing things to that point. Okay. Number 4 is use the AAMC section bank and use the AAMC practice exams like make sure you know those in and out like the third party exams are great for kind of getting practice and improving your score but if you haven't kind of if you can't look at a section bank question and really know the answer to that why you're getting it right why you're getting it wrong um, things like that like you should know those exams in and out you should know those section bank questions in and out maybe even the question pack questions even though i don't think they're as difficult as the real exam and so make sure you really really know the amc resource as well because your job as a test taker is to think how a test writer would think and so you want to eventually get to the point where you're able to read a passage and then think about the like figure out what questions they're going to ask based on the passage without actually looking at the passage. And if you can get to that point, you're thinking like a test taker or you're thinking like a test writer and that can give you the advantage that you need as a test taker. Okay, number five, use Google Images. So um, this was actually something that I learned after I got into med school, after I took the MCAT and um, I was getting tutoring because I was struggling during my first year of med school. And I have got a tutor who was a third year med student and Whenever I asked him a question, he would always go to Google Images before he go to Google. And he would show me a picture that would kind of help me understand the information and then consolidate it in my brain. The thing about the MCAT is there's a lot of like visual flow diagrams, things like that, that'll help you understand and consolidate the information. For example, biology, I remember having a lot of trouble with uh, muscles and like the Z line and the uh, actin and sarcomeres and all those things and ryanidine receptors and eventually I just watched a YouTube animation that kind of helped me to visualize it and then I found a Google image that really showed me the whole like picture of how things move around and so that's kind of the advantage of doing something like um, science uh, in in undergrad or studying for the MCAT is that there's a lot of visual diagrams that can help you consolidate information and to help you remember information versus something like computer science or math. It's more like abstract. And so you want to take the advantages of studying this specific field of science to its fullest by using images to consolidate information and by using images to and using videos to really make sure that you understand a concept. So use Google Images, use YouTube to really consolidate information. Okay, those are my five tips. I hope that's really helpful. I'll make sure that I leave like an email down below or something so you can ask me personal questions. Otherwise, you can leave questions in the comments down below. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.